in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 13, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. That's the people of God. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. What is Paul saying? What are some of the things that governs his life as a Christian? It's God, a Godward mindset that what he does, he truly longs to do it for God. Now, let me ask you a question. The life that you live, the lifestyle in which you walk, is it for God? If we were to open up the heart chamber that holds the motivation, would we see that you really are doing what you do for God? Think, discern, examine. Is it out of love for him and out of love for his people? Verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature in your innermost being. Are you a new creature with new desires? Christianity is not picking up a book and finding all these new principles to live by. It's just religion. It's just rule keeping. It's just Phariseeism. Is your life marked by worship? Not just, I've got to worship. Not just, I've got to do this, a forced thing, a disciplined thing, a thing I must make myself do. Even though at times we must crucify the flesh, we must discipline ourselves and we must worship. But the true believer, their life will be marked by worship. Not having to worship, but desiring to worship. Now surrender, repent, believe the gospel, turn away from your wickedness and your worldliness and your playing church and trust in Christ who is mighty to save. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Mr. Sam Lopez. We're here. We're here. Another day, another morning. Um, depending on where you're watching from, it could be nighttime where you're at in your time zone. But over here in North America, in the East Coast of America side over things, we're here in the East Eastern Standard Time, so it's 10 something in the morning. So, good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. God bless you, everyone, over listening at soulwinnerswithaz.org on the player on the 247 network right there that we have on there. Greetings to you as well. I know I have a lot of listeners there as well. So, I decided, listen, let me just say hi, pass by, do some lives so that the way they know I'm still around. Um, I'm the owner of Cellar Radio Network and also uh, the co-founder of Soul Winners, Inc. with my wife, my beautiful wife, Vinny Lopez. And we do this because we know God deserves to be praised and honored and worshipped. And the gospel message is not, you know, uh, just to be hoarded and just to be learned and not say anything about it. The gospel message is for us to spread it out, keep it out there and put it out there as, as many ways as we can. This gospel message is that good and that big. Amen. So good morning, Brother Damien. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo, my friend and my brother. Amen. Um, so God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So we're going to talk about a question that I, I, I had a weird dream last night. Um, it was just weird. And it had to do with fear. I think, I think in my dream, the enemy was trying to put fear in me. So I woke up. Like a little startled, but I was like, okay, um, God didn't give me a spirit of fear. And then I looked around and of course it was a dream. And I was like, okay, that didn't really happen, right? So God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So that fear comes from someone else, another spirit, because it's not from God's spirit, right? So we could, we could agree with that. For the most part, people would agree with me that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of a sound mind of courage, right? Sound mind and the ability to know who we are because we know whose we are, right? We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ because we gave our life to him. He gave our life for us first. And I think the, you know, obvious thing for us to do is give our lives back to him. Amen. So he died for us so we could live. So we should live so that way um, people will know that we are alive in him, in him. So we just celebrated Resurrection Sunday, the biggest holiday of all Christians all around the world. That's our highest day 
Apostle Paul said, listen, if the resurrection did not happen, then we're still dying in our sins. We have no gospel. We should keep our mouths closed because we don't have any truth. And our faith is in vain. And there's not there's no foundation of truth based in what happened. But the resurrection did happen. Jesus is still alive. He's coming back soon. And I know you probably heard that a lot. Um, I was reading some posts earlier this morning and a sister friend of mine, a sister in Christ, runs a, a large, very large group on Facebook. And someone had asked or she put a post that says, you know, Jesus is coming back soon. And somebody asked the obvious question or they made the obvious statement, which a lot of people make. Uh, how do you know that he's coming back? Because I heard it for 40 something years that he's coming back and he's still not here. Well, God is eternal God. A day to God could be a thousand years. We don't know. We don't know how God does the timing. Amen. But we do know that if he says a thing, he means it. And if he means the things, he says the things because he means it. Amen. He is coming back soon. Good morning, Sister Medalia. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the morning, Devo. It's good to see you. Amen. Apologize that your little circle with your face is not showing up. Uh, I don't know what happened ever since this update. This thing has not been um, um, making me happy in the morning. So, so what if I asked you, if you had all the power in the world, if you have all the power in the world, if you had it, would you be afraid of anything? Would anything like make you afraid? Or would you fear anything if you had all the power in the world? Would you be afraid of anything? Amen? Because, um... If you did have all that power, right, you shouldn't be afraid of anything. Even death, you shouldn't be afraid of. Amen. Good morning, Sister Joyce. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Yes. So we shouldn't have any issues if we had all the power in the world, right? What do you think? So we know that, number one, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Number two, God has all power and authority, and he reigns and rules and if we belong to him, if we believe in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, then we have all power. There's no more greater power than God's power. Amen. So if we have the power of God in us, and I'm not talking about that we're gods. I'm not saying that. I am saying if we have the one inside of us, he who is greater than he who is in the world inside of us, and that person is Holy Spirit God, the third person of the Trinity, why would we be afraid of anything? Because we would have all the power or we do have for those who are saved all the power in, of the world in us. The creator, the one who created the universe is inside of us. I know it sounds huge, especially in the morning. Probably didn't get even drink your coffee yet or whatever. Um, but it is that huge. It is that God that says that he would rescue us, save us. And the Holy Spirit indwelling in us will keep us occupied. We'll be here safe, sound ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you think? Is that the gospel? Is that what the word says? No force could keep God down. No force could keep Jesus in the tomb. No force. Therefore, he's not a force. This is not Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker type of force. This is holy, righteous, loving God that we're talking about. Jesus Christ. So the Romans killed them. They they were the professionals at the at the place of execution, right? Um, they were the professional uh, crucifiers, right? They were in charge of the crucifixion. But the Romans did the Romans really kill Jesus? What about the Jews? Did the Jews really kill Jesus? Well, the Sanhedrin and all those people, the Sadducees and and you know Pharisees, did they are they responsible for the murder of Jesus? What do you think? Or how about Pilate or the governors at the time, the authorities in the Roman government? Were they responsible for putting Jesus on the cross and murdering Jesus? You know, what do you think? You think they were responsible, the Jews, the Romans, or, you know, the government in Rome? Who do you think was responsible for putting Jesus on that cross? I'll leave it there for now. You, you think about it real good. And I'm going to give you my answer after we pray. And I'll give you a minute to share this out. And when we come back, we're going to read one scripture today. And it's very short. 
but it's powerful because the Lord Jesus said it. And that's in John chapter 10, verse 18. We'll be in there. We'll be reading that. And we're going to be thinking about this thing of fear and the power that we have as believers and Christians. And if we use it the right way, the power that God gave us with love, grace, and mercy, unstoppable. That's what we'll be calling ourselves, unstoppable. Because we were having, we'll be using the power that's in us, the power of love, grace, and mercy, and the power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, and the power to believe in exactly what the word says, and to believe in the word, and to trust in the word, right? On this morning Devo, which I called, What Are You Afraid Of? It started with a question, right? What are you afraid of today, right now? And let's, let's deal with it. Let's get that fear out of your mind and out of your heart once and for all. So that way it will never return. And if it tries to return, knocking on your door of your heart, knocking on the door of your mind, you just say, hey, fear, what's up? You're not invited, but since you're here, wait right here. And then you go get Jesus to answer that door or Jesus to answer that mind, Jesus to answer your heart. Amen. And we'll see what happens with that fear and that spirit of fear. Wherever it came from, it will have to go back, right? So let's pray. If you have any prayer requests, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can do that live. For the listeners on the network, you can also connect with me at 484-767-6684, 484-767-6684. If you want to call in with a live question, concern, prayer request, or anything like that, um, you could actually do it. I have my phone connected to the mixing board and I'm ready to go. Got my headphones on the side just in case somebody does call in so I can hear very clearly what they're saying to make sure we can communicate clearly. So any prayer requests, put them on now. If not, if you don't want it public, you know how I am. If you don't want something public, you can put it on the inbox. You could always inbox me privately and I'll keep your privacy private. Amen. I saw a friend of mine that's in pain in a hospital. Amen. Uh, and I'm pre-praying for him as well. I don't know what's going on. Uh, my friend, um, Joel. Um, so we'll pray for him right now. And if anybody has any prayer requests, um, just put it up here. If not, let's just pray. And then I'll give you a minute to share this out. I haven't shared it out myself. So we'll share this video as many with as many people as we can. Also, if you know somebody who's not on social media, and but they do have a phone. And they do have a smartphone. Uh, most, I think most of the country, most of the people I know have cell phones that have internet, Wi-Fi or whatever. You can send them right over to soulwinnerswithaz.org and all they have to do, literally, like no joke, watch the video from there or they could just press play on the player button and they can listen in to what God is doing this morning. Amen. So that's another way we could share this out. Uh, I don't have no clue what's going on with my network, but I am so encouraged with all the listeners that are coming by the network and playing and pressing that play button and staying on there for hours and hours and hours to listen to what's happening on the Celarito network. It's a prophetic thing that was prophesied years ago over this ministry and to see it come to pass like you believe all the time but when you actually see it coming to pass you'll be like wow that's a God thing for sure because I know a lot of people don't want to hear me for hours. I know that for a fact. They don't want to hear me for five minutes. They don't want to hear me, <laughs> some people. But God is good. So as long as the message of the gospel is getting out to as many as God said it would get out to, amen, I am, my soul is satisfied. And if it just saves one person, which I know it's been more than one person, but if it's just one person, I believe God will be honored, amen, and my soul will be completely satisfied. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for today. I thank you for the power of healing through your word, because of your word, and because of the stripes that you take took already. Um, because of your stripes, um, we are healed. The stripes that you took on your back, we are healed. So I speak healing over my friend Joel right now in the hospital as he's in tremendous amount of pain. I pray, Lord God, whatever the issue is, Lord God, that you see to it that he will be made well. In the name of Jesus, I pray health to his body, strength to his bones. I pray wisdom to every single doctor that is um, trying to do the best that they can um, to take away the pain or whatever issues going on. I pray that you give them wisdom, understanding and know how. Amen. In a tremendous way. 
I pray also, Lord God, that for every single listener, for every single viewer, Lord God, that you would touch our hearts, our, our minds, and that you will unify us as in one, as one, under one God, under one faith, one body. Amen. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would do a great work in our hearts and minds today. I pray for our awkward angels, minister angels to every single home, every single listener, every single workplace, every single you know job or school, wherever they find themselves, wherever I find myself, I pray that you will be present by way of your spirit, that the angels will be on total alert, fully alert, available and ready um, to do your will for us and to keep us safe from harm and to keep us from the evil one. In Jesus name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. So. Oh, amen. This is Medallia. Thank you. Oh, we do love to hear you preach. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Amen. Amen. So where are we? So we prayed. Oh, we, let's take a minute right now to uh, just um, share this with as many people. Good morning, Sister Lissette. Good morning. God bless you. You see how Sister Lissette's picture shows up and everybody else's picture doesn't show up? That's so weird to me. But it's good to see you here on the Morning Devo. Amen. So let's get take a minute and we'll share this out. And when we come back. We're going to be in John chapter 10, verse 18. We're going to hear what the Lord and Savior says right out of his own mouth. Amen. That's recorded and we have the word on it because the word is there. So let's go. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. Thank you for sharing this out. So we already know that no force could keep Jesus in his tomb. We, I asked the question earlier, do you think the Romans or the Jews or the government of Rome killed Jesus or murdered Jesus? Do you think that they were responsible for putting Jesus on that cross? What do you think? What do you think? That's a good question, right? I ain't gonna lie, that's a good question. Do you think we put him on a cross? What do you think about that? You want to know my answer? I believe that although all those people were used, right, the Roman officials, the Romans that um, crucified Jesus, um, the Jews that accused them of blasphemy and put them in front of these mock trials. They wasn't even real trials. And I believe they were used to propel the gospel message. I think they were used to satisfy the prophetic word over the Lord Jesus. I think they were used. But guess who put himself on the cross? Guess who put Jesus on the cross? I already said it. He put himself on the cross. He laid his life down. No one murdered Jesus. No one killed Jesus. No one overpowered the Lord. He laid down his life for us. The Bible says in John 10, verse 18, no one takes it away from me. No one. This is the Lord speaking. But I lay it down voluntarily. I am authorized, listen to this, I am authorized and I have power to lay it down and to give it up. And I am authorized and have power to take it back. This command I have received from my father. Jesus is saying, listen, I'm laying down my life. I have, I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of anything. All power, all authority is given to Jesus, the Lord, the Christ. So he has all power. So he has all the power of the world. He's the creator of the world. The Bible says that all things that we see and the things that are unseen were created by him, through him, and for him. He has all the power, all the authority. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid. 100% man, he was in a garden, you know, drips of blood, crying. He was in agony. And he even asked the father if this cup could be taken away. But not 
his will be done, but God, the Father's will be done. So he went anyway. You know, although his his in one hundred percent being man, he probably you know dealt with fear, but fear didn't take him down. Fear didn't overpower him. Fear didn't stay. He was courageous and he went to that cross because he is the one who has all authority, all power. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. No one took his life from him. He voluntarily laid his life down. Just saying, he wasn't afraid. What are you afraid of today? If you know this God, this Lord and this Savior who wasn't afraid to die because he knew he was going to come back to life. And not only that, when he came back to life, all those who are saved and born again, hello, we're coming back to life too. So that means death doesn't have any power over us either. The tomb and the burial ground and the grave can't hold us back either. Because our souls are saved and we're delivered. We will, this body, this flesh and bones, right? And a bag of bones, some people call it, will eventually expire. But there's no expiration date on a born-again Christian soul. A born-again Christian soul is forever saved if we're born again. From above, from the spirit, by the spirit. So what are we afraid of today? I can honestly tell you that I had a dream last night. That was trying to put fear in me. So I said, you know what I do when I, when that thing tries to happen or whatever the enemy's trying to do or whatever sorcerer or witch is trying to put a spell over me. I wake up with a word that God gave me against fear. I'm not going to be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid if you know the Lord Jesus Christ personally. Those things that go bump at night, stay sleeping because the one angel that encamps around you because you love God, right? We'll watch over you overnight, right? And that angel that's assigned to you, that's in camps around those who belong to the Lord. It's no joke. It's all about it's all about Terminator times a thousand. You know, ain't nobody gonna get no spirit being will be able to harm you or to try to bypass um, the angel of the Lord that's assigned to your life and into my life. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. The weapon will be formed. And witches will be trying to do their spells. Or warlocks will be trying to do this. Satanists will try to be praying curses over us and all this other stuff. But it's not going to work. It will challenge us, yes. Sometimes if we're not aware, if we're not ready, if we're not focused, if we're not reading our word, if we're not praying, if we're not engaged in the body of Christ, if we're not um, surrounding ourselves in a uh, with a community of believers, um, there's going to be holes and the enemy will try to poke into those holes that he sees. <laughs> but God is greater than the enemy. There's not a verse. It's not the devil versus God. This is not Godzilla versus King Kong Con type of thing. No, the enemy is already defeated. Jesus already defeated the enemy. We're just walking through time and our time catching up to what God has already done. If we will ever catch up to it. But I know one thing for sure that Jesus said he's coming back. And the enemy for once and for all is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. So don't be afraid. If you're afraid of something today, what is that thing that you're afraid of? And look at it, name it, and watch how God will take that thing out of your life, out of your mind, out of your heart. If you go to God and say, listen, this thing keeps on challenging me. This thing keeps on trying to bring fear in my life. But you said in your word that no one has power over your life, over my life. We lay down our lives. If we have to, we'll lay down our lives. Eventually, God will take us. He gives us life. He gives us life and he takes away our life. On this planet, I'm just saying. But if we're his, we're forever his. For all eternity, we'll be with him. This is a command given to Jesus by the Father. So guess what? When you see Jesus, the Son, you see the Father. When you see the Father, you see the Son. Because Jesus said, listen, you see me, you're looking for God, you see me, you've seen the God. If you're looking at me, you're looking for the Father, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. No man comes to the Father except through Jesus. He said it, and that's a very exclusive thing that he said. And to this very day, people don't like that. For obvious reasons, why would somebody like that kind of exclusive uh, statement? That someone will make. It says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except by me, except through me. That's a good, that's a good thing right there. Amen. Listen, it's time for you to sow seeds into these words. 
I, I'm feeling God, um, and I know he wants to bless people. Sow a seed into the ministry, djsandrock.com forward slash donate. Sow a seed of faith and of courage. Sow a seed of salvation over your family. Sow a seed of your mind being set free from any mental illness. Sow a seed for health, strength, protection. Sow a seed for prosperity, true prosperity. It's not only money. True prosperity is health and wealth, right? True prosperity. Sow a seed. Don't be afraid. Because a lot of people are afraid even to do that. A lot of people are afraid to let go what's not even theirs. In other words, uh, I let go of things that are not even mine. Money is not mine, right? It belongs to the God. It belongs to the kingdom of God. It belongs to the Lord. But he only asked for a portion and we could keep the whole bunch. Amen. And every time I've done that and I do it pretty much every week, all the time. Um, this was a weird week. Uh, I have to um, double up on my ties for some reason. I must have miscalculated something um, or I must have did something in ministry um, that um, I don't know what I did. But I don't stop giving. No way, no how. I know the power of God's word. I know how the kingdom of God's economy works. Amen. When you give uh, into the kingdom, God will give into your family, into your life, right? Into your situation. And since he didn't give us a spirit of fear, amen, we come against fear with love. Biblically, the opposite of fear, right, is love. Because perfect love, the perfect love of God cast out all fear, A-L-L, we don't have to live in fear. We don't know fear like that because God doesn't know fear. God's not afraid. Jesus wasn't afraid, even though he, you know, had a, a situation where he said, listen, if this, if you could just take this cup away from me, because the the sins of the world to be placed on his on him, yet he himself did not sin, that must have been crazy. Like I, I'm into Marvel comics. I watch some DC movies too. And, you know, you have the superhero, the villains and all that stuff. And they go against situations that they have to sacrifice their life and all this other stuff. But there's no other, there's no greater sacrifice than what Jesus did for us. So he's a super, supernatural hero, right? He's above every hero you could ever imagine or think of in Marvel Comics or DC Comics. He's more than a superhero. He's God Almighty. And he himself humbled himself and laid himself down. Laid his life down for me and for you. Incredible message. There's no other message like the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can search for it. You won't find it. God bless you, Brother Jose. Nana, God bless you, man. So that's all I had. I, I woke up and I said, listen. So since I'm getting attacked with this thing of fear uh, through a dream, I know I'm not the only one. That's how I see it. I said, if it's happening to me, that means it's happening to other people around the way, around the world, around the block, around the community, around the states, and around the nations. So let me speak up of what God wants me to speak up. They put a big stone in front of the tomb. Remember when Jesus was buried, they put a big stone in front of the tomb, sealed it with the Roman seal, and they posted a 24-hour guard. It wasn't just a security guard. It was a guard, like a group of men. Could have been two. I know it was more than one. They are only trying to prevent the inevitable. And what was the inevitable? If this was true, that Jesus was the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and it was true that people got this, the message that he was saying that if you would destroy his temple and three days later he would raise again, they didn't want that to happen. They couldn't allow that to happen. They didn't want the disciples to come in the middle of the night to try to take the body out of there. So what they did, they put guards 24 hours around the tomb But Jesus had all power, all the power in the world. So basically that tomb was like that. That rock that was in the front, he could have just, or could have just looked at it. That thing would have just disintegrated. But this is what Jesus did. He came back to life like he said he would. The tomb was put to the side, right, by an angel or by his power, by a thought. And he walked out of there. Don't ask me what happened to the guards. Don't ask me what happened. For sure, the disciples couldn't do it. They couldn't get in there. So what are you most afraid of today? What you fear the most is under the feet of Jesus. Some people have anxiety and they fear death. 
They think something bad is going to happen to them today. Well, if you give your life to the Lord right now, at this time, in this place, in this space, that fear has to go. And you put that fear under the feet of Jesus. Whatever you fear the most, you put that under the feet of Jesus. And Jesus will walk over that thing. He will walk with you, walk over your fear, walk over your sickness, walk over your disease, walk over your lack, walk over your relational issues, walk over your mental depression. He'll walk over there, over it. It'll be under his feet and you'll be walking with him. So if, you, so if everything, if all those things are under the feet of Jesus then, and then you're walking with him, he's walking with you, right? Then you are above those things. So today pray that Jesus, that you believe, right? You could pray this. Jesus, I believe you are bigger than my problems. Go ahead and say it. Jesus, I believe that you are bigger than my problems. I place blank whatever fear that you have. Whatever that blank is, I place anxiety, I place lack, I place sickness, I place whatever it is that's giving you the most trouble when it comes to being afraid of it. Put that in the blank. So I place blank in your hands right now. It could be money issues, mental issues, uh, whatever's trying, demonic attacks. I place blank in your hands right now. If you don't fix this, would you at least give me your peace in the middle of it? That's an amazing prayer, believe it or not. If you don't fix this, if you don't take this away, if um, I have to deal with this longer, would you at least bring me peace? And God is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Wonderful counselor, right? Almighty God. He's holy and sovereign. He will do what his word says his word would do. He's trustworthy. He's able. He, he's so able to do these things that we can do. That's why we need him. If I could do whatever I wanted to do, if I, if I had all the power in the world myself, yeah, I, I wouldn't need a God because I, you know, I'll be, I'll be forever young. But something happened. I'm not God. I'm not forever young. Yeah, I would have stood in my twenties. Those were some good years. Um, for my for my physical body at least I guess even though I was living a party life so probably not but whatever I would have stood younger than this if I had total control over who I am you ever heard somebody say oh I, I I own my body I could do whatever I want with my body well then stay young then it's, it belongs to you right you can control your body stay young then let me see how that works for you amen stay young forever but in Christ although our bodies decaying our inner man, the spirit of God, is being renewed. We're made. It's like we're being made young because we're preparing for eternity. The spirit um, is willing. The flesh is weak. But the spirit, the spirit of God in us is eternal. There is no decay um, in the spirit of God. There is no decay in Holy Spirit God. There's only decay in this flesh and bones. Amen. Sister Joyce says, he rose with all power in his hands. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. He gave us his Holy Ghost power. Yes, power. And people want to see the power of God in the people of God. Because a lot of people are tired of us talking about this power and not demonstrating this power. But I believe God will not allow us to demonstrate any power until we demonstrate the love for one another. So that way, then the world, we know first and foremost that we belong to him by the love we express for one another. And then, boy, would he demonstrate his power. And listen, make no mistake, I've seen the Lord's power in my life. I've seen the Lord's power in Sister Joyce's life and my church and brothers and sisters that I know, my pastors, uh, all kind of people that I know. I've seen power work through them. Uh, my spiritual parents, power, power. Um, People that come on the network, Dr. Reverend Holmes and the Holmes family, power, you know, or made our family power, you know, so many, you know, through my wife and her family, power and my mother-in-law, power and my family, power of God. I've seen it. But love came first. Right. That was the key for us demonstrating this power. It had to be the love that we express from one another. So thank you, Sister Joyce, for that comment, that post. And I thank you, everybody else, for listening on the Celebrator Network. I'm out of here. I'm a little over time. 
But I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. And to the next time, make sure, make sure you know that God is good. And he could be good in your life as well. Amen. God bless you. Peace.